What is up, everybody? So, we're doing another episode of the Saturday Artist Live Interview Podcast. Today, we'll be having Mandy Maxwell Mooneyham. Mooneyham, yeah. And I'm going to invite her right now. Hello. What's Hello. up? It's working. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself and what kind of art you do? Um, well, I am Mandy Maxwell Mooneyham and I am a surrealist artist, sort of uh, unusual uh, in the fact that my Art is all the same subject matter, just uh, through different lenses, I guess. And so, as you'll see, if you look at my art, it's all about chairs uh, with trees growing out of them. And for me, it kind of started um, seeing seeing it as uh, a person's imagination or their consciousness and how you can be grounded, sitting in the growing, changing and evolving. And it just kind of grew from there. And now mm -hmm. these um, I'm Would still you mind just in that last part, the, uh, the audio is kind of breaking in and out. <clears throat> oh, no. Um, so uh, which part? <laughs> All of it? <laughs> Just the past like thirty seconds. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, the trees to me, it's it's all about how a person can be sitting in a chair, grounded, but still growing and brand changing, evolving, and then it's kind of grown from there and gone from single entities into like collective consciousness of uh, all being. So it's it's just it's a really crazy concept, and I'm sort of addicted to it like I can't stop and I just I just I, it's like my art just kind of translates itself through these chairs and trees and I have accepted my role and it's what I do now so, uh, so how did you get started in art I have been doing art for my entire life like as far back as I remember my mom kind of gave me pen and paper to shut me up <laughs> And I, I went to a really strange school where we didn't have art class. And for some reason, it just made me want more. Um, so I got obsessed with like, what was in our library, which was old school, like Michelangelo, Da Vinci, um, Renaissance era, not even contemporary, you know, Van Gogh or anything. It was all just like the masters, which I'm grateful for now. Um, but yeah, so I just obsessed over that and copied and copied and copied that and it, uh, until it felt like, hey, you know, I might have something here, this is, you know, uh, and um, yeah, it became something that I couldn't see myself being without. <laughs> so you're like a self-taught artist or did you go to school for it at any point? <clears throat> um I okay, so I we didn't have art in, in any of my classes until I went to public school in eleventh grade, and there they my teacher just was like, "You're kind of amazing. Let's book you th like because I had never taken art. I got to take like three art classes in a row, and so she kind of just gave me these um, special projects, and so she did teach. Uh, more on how to just gave me more resources and and I feel like she kind of thought I might have been a little out of her league but she set me up for good things and and gave me the the resources I needed to kind of like continue teaching myself um and then when I got to call I did go to college for art and um but at the same time I was really obsessed with graphic design and thought like I could never an artist like no make me money so um but so i decided i would do like a weird 
So my degree is graphic design with an emphasis, wait, it's printmaking with an emphasis in graphic design. So because I had like a studio class, I don't know, I basically got to take a mixture of studio classes and design classes. So uh, I, I um, so even though it's a digital degree, it was, I still had to, I was able to take a lot of the classes I just desperately wanted to take in drawing and paint. And, and I really actually didn't take painting classes other than color theory. Um, and, and then I took a lot of drawing classes. I love drawing. Um, and, and then a lot of like printmaking and um, more like methods. And I, I, I would say most of my ability is self-taught um, because even in drawing classes, I, but I'm to the table with a lot too. Um, and, you know, I didn't go to fancy art college. I went to Arkansas State. So, um, yeah, and my professors were great, but they also kind of did the same thing where they enabled me for better things. And yeah. I I've, I I guess also because of my elementary school and like my where I went to school before I went to public school it was through video and it's it's really complicated um, but we we learned by watching videos it was like a homeschool program but not and so I almost taught myself everything that I know and um, and so it's just naturally natural for me to learn from books and. You, you know, and now YouTube, uh, obviously, and just, it's really natural for me to just teach myself what I want to know. And I've never been, like, I've never seen something and went, I could never do that. I see stuff and I'm like, how can I make that happen if I wanted mm -hmm. to? And so I've never felt like I, could, I couldn't do something. And I guess that's just all from me, like, always figuring it out. <laughs> So how did you get into surrealism? Um, well, I, it kind of got into me, I guess. Uh, I, I actually really, before Chairs and Trees, I loved portraiture. I did uh, tons of portraits. I loved painting portraits and realism and, you know, I think that goes back to lear like learning from the masters and, and, and anatomy and and i really like a challenge like bring it on you know and so uh i thought like portraits were the heart you know the the peak the best you could do is portraits i don't know and <clears throat> so that's what i mainly did but for some reason what like there was um i painted a chair and tree for for it was just a personal project um and it and it just um, I can't remember who said it, but I, I read or heard somewhere that um, some people believe that paintings and art kind of like exist in the collective consciousness, and we just kind of like find it and and become that vessel for that art. And I almost feel like that's what happened because, like, I painted this chair and tree, and it was the first time I really felt like dang, this is a great painting. You know, like, even with my portraits, I did great portrait, but it just, like, I felt that painting so much, and I didn't want to get rid of it, and I had, I had, like, people offering to buy it, and I still have it. I could go get it, but um, that was the first Cheris entry, and it was, it was painted in 2009, and I just kept coming back to it. I, like, I, over time, I just kept coming back to this concept of this chair and tree, a, a chair and tree, as as a portrait in and of itself. And there's so much to the chair and tree that's to me even more complex than portraiture. In which, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. Like my brain just wrapped around it, and now it's like all I. It's like how I see art, and I. Yeah, I, I, I just accepted it. I accepted my fate as chairs and trees artists. And I would 
so far I've never, you know, don't have ideas and don't see it ending anytime soon. Um, but Would you say that Jungian psychology really influences you or stuff? Because I know you talk about the collective unconscious a lot. Yeah, uh, that and just consciousness in general. I love listening to the consciousness podcast and several others that, and and I it's it's like it's really branched out this whole universe of of tree and I spell it C it's C H R E E so chair tree together makes trees love that <laughs> and um but yeah I it it definitely inspires me the the work of um psychologists but also uh quantum physics and like how and and the idea that what we see is not what's there and like we don't know what we are like it's just this whole thing of you know we don't know what's out there and maybe there these entities exist and i've tapped into i mean you know there's it's, it's a strange concept but i feel like it's just like pouring into me <laughs> So when it comes to like your art, I noticed you you have a lot of blues. Like is that, is that your favorite color? Because like, at least some of the some of the older paintings I've looked through, you like. Is there any particular hues that you like to go to, or any I, color combinations? I definitely like orange. <laughs> um, okay. It, and and blue. It, it there definitely are colors that I gravitate towards, and I I and I have a very strong opinion on how these colors should represent should be you know i um i like i like that my backgrounds are these sort of spaces and they don't have clouds and they don't have a lot of things that are representational so you can be like oh that's a chair floating in space you know it could be in space it could be in the sky it could be in your body it could be like you know on the level or you know it's this very vague uh Space. And I also really like flat color because I feel like the trees deserve all the attention. And so any kind of, uh, you know, I've, I've been working a little bit with gradients and subtle backgrounds, but it's there. It's usually these like really flat colors with uh, okay with trees come you know emerging, um, so that they're really the star of the show. <laughs> So, like, what uh, mediums do you use and why? Um, well, I really like a lot of mediums, and I think that's one of the reasons I like what I do so much is because I, I am, I'm not limited in color palette and in my mediums. I can uh, kind of do whatever I, whatever the tree wants. <laughs> Sometimes I just, I just kind of let it go and I'm surrounded by art supply all the time, so, um, but yeah, I do oil, um, we've got, um, uh, graphite, I love, 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 love drawing, um, I've got water wash, uh, pretty much name it, I probably have done a chair with that medium, <laughs> And if not, I will. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any particular artist that really has influenced you or that you gravitate towards their style or just appreciate the most? Well, um, there are several, uh, obviously. Um, I, I love Salvador Dali. Uh, it's kind of cliche, but as a... The realist, you know, he really embodies that. The surrealist, and the uh, I'll do whatever I want. You know, everybody else be damned. I love that attitude towards art, and like, just not like listening to yourself. And like, he's he's very much a like I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want, and I like that attitude when it comes to art. Um, but I feel like the there is an artist that I'm like really deeply personally connected to um, that I, so 
I grew up in a really small town here in Arkansas, and there's a another inter internationally known artist named Carol Clore, who also grew up in actually my personal hometown, like little bitty 3,000 people, Arkansas. And uh, he, I grew up listening to stories and like always being compared to folklore because all of these like I went to church with his aunt and you know I knew somebody my grandmother walked into school and used to spank him and like you know just crazy stories I don't know if that's actually true but she used to tell me and I just grew up with these stories about this artist and he, he wasn't even really an artist to me it was just somebody that like people compared me to even growing up um and even when I was little, the the older people in our town, I I really like hanging out with them and reading them poetry and stuff. And they, there was one who always told my mom, like, this girl's an artist. <laughs> and and I didn't know back then. I was like, yeah, sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, I am. <laughs> and and I love. I've always loved his work. It's very very. Uh, vibrant we definitely have different styles but uh it's very colorful it's very vibrant but he also uses scenes from my hometown a lot and so it's like oh that's that's home you know and it's um it, so in 2016 recent um M memphis so memphis tennessee had a whole like summer of Clore and all the universities had uh, gallery shows with him in it. They brought his entire studio and he's from like the, the uh, so he, he's no longer with us, but they brought his entire walls of his studio with like stuff he had painted and like uh, magazines that he had pinned on the walls and stuff. They had all of this on display and it was just like, um, they even did a bike ride in my town, like in my hometown, to go to all the locations of his work. And it's really in incredible because it's like, you know, not if he can do it, I can do it, but almost a little bit of that. Um, and it, it's just, it's just nice to have somebody like done it from my hometown and. Um, I, but yeah, I've always felt a connection to Carol Clore. And even now, like if you go to some rich person's house in the South, sometimes they'll have a Carol Clore and you'll be like, oh, there it is. <laughs> and um, hopefully someday that'll be, that'll be me. <laughs> um, oh, definitely will. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so like, do you have any specific method of when you paint, like, to, do you wait for inspiration or do you have like a daily practice or something that you use to kind of get yourself going? Um, I, I, I kind of like to approach it as, as not automatic, but almost automatic. Uh, typically I have, my inspiration is more of like the impression of what I feel. And I know that's, kind of weird sounding but it's like sometimes I I feel like I want to do a, a movement like you know some there's some kind of movement I want to get out and sometimes it's it's a color that I want to, to be in for a while or a uh you know a certain um shape of a tree uh, or or you know maybe I want to feel like big and overpowering or like I don't know like that's the kind of when I feel like that, that's when I go into a painting. And I, I do have, not maybe not daily, but almost daily, uh, if not daily, uh, practice of at least sketching. I paint uh, all the time. I have a uh, bi-weekly Twitch show, which is just me in my studio. Uh, so we, I do some full pieces at least twice a week. Um, and... I'm usually sketching if I'm not in the studio, so I'm I'm always drawing, but um, but yeah, I, I and sometimes when I'm drawing, you know, 
whatever comes out in my sketchbook, I'm like, oh, this this needs to be bigger. And so sometimes I approach painting, like I've already got a sketch in mind, but sometimes I just like, I just want to feel what I want to feel. And, and I just go into it like that. So, um, and I'm really good at like not letting it go to waste. So if there's something I didn't like, I can, I can modify it until it's the right way. So I like that. Okay, so, no, no. Yeah. It's like an automatic kind of unconscious thing. You're going with letting the unconscious kind of flow through you to be creative rather than trying to be intentional. Yeah. It, okay. It's kind of like, just like, like when you have, something you want to say and it's on the edge of your tongue like and and i i'll know when the painting's done when i feel like it's come out you know okay so like it sounds like your art's kind of like almost like a mystical like experience in and of itself yeah because like not only are you like you're you're doing something but you are you are the paintbrush for whatever the unconscious is to go through you. so you're really you're a paintbrush holding a paintbrush making a, a new creation Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what I, how I like to feel like I feel about it. <laughs> so is there any like particular thing that you would suggest to people that want to like start doing like more automatic type of art or um, kind of unconscious art? Is there any like advice that you'd give to like creators that would do that? Uh, um, yeah, I would say try to find, like find that, feeling inside yourself of like and and don't try to make it a whole piece you know like I said sometimes I come to the canvas with just a feeling of like I want to make this movement you know and I try to figure out how that would work in my art and and sometimes it's that I I just want to experience this color that I've fallen in love with over the past 24 hours and I've got to put it on canvas in a big way um and it's you know just Find those subtle things inside you that are like, I need to get this out. And don't try to make it into something else. Just go with it. And and use your, use what, you know, train yourself as, you know, with your, with the principles of art. And, you know, you know what makes good art, uh, you know, supply that in big ways or in, 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 uh, like, just don't stop. Just let it go until until you feel like the painting is done. And and it, you know maybe it's something like you know a, a, maybe you need to find your tree. Or you know for me it's I, I can always go to a tree and get that movement out, or my backgrounds get that color out. But you know what is it that you like to draw? If it's a person, and make the person, you know, make them have that movement. Make, um, uh, you know, just just let it go without having to have this big idea in your head of like what this whole canvas is going to be undone. Just just try to bring those subtle uh, artistic uh, inspirations to the canvas with, and let yourself go. <laughs> Okay, so kind of like find find whatever theme that you're feeling and just go with it without trying to overcomplicate it. Yes, and and you know having some kind of subject matter that you can turn to if you like painting people, just start with a person and and just let it go and don't don't really think about it. Maybe you know just whatever comes to your head, try to incorporate it. Like if you think of rocks or something and then you know just just don't think about it too hard like maybe you know, just add a rock wherever you think would look you know using your principles of art like composition blah blah, blah. you know maybe they're holding a rock maybe they're tied to a rock maybe they have rocks tied around you know just whatever little thing comes in your head just apply it to what you're coming what you're already doing and just let it go and by the time you're done painting that part, you probably have thought of something else and just go, mm -hmm. to, go to that and, and keep, keep going to these different things until you feel like you're, you're done. But if you have good enough fundamentals of art, it's going to look good no matter what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just let, let yourself go. And almost like you're dreaming through painting, you're just, you know, 
just uh, doing what comes naturally. Yeah, that, that pretty much like is the definition of surrealism. It's, it's like a dream that you've kind of projected into the real world. So I would like say to sum up what you were saying is like um, practice like normal things, like get your principles down, but from there branch off into kind of almost a meditative state of just like one thing at a time. Don't worry about what's coming next. Just do that one thing. And by the time you're done with that, the next thing will come. I, that's a, it's a, it's a fun way to be. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think that works for me and I feel like that's a good, a good approach to surrealism if you want to get into that. Um, and it's, well, it's almost like it'll surprise you, but, uh, I've had people tell me that they like watching me paint because you never know where you're going to end up. You know, we might, um, you know, and, and it's fun for me because I feel the same way. You know, I never know where where we're going to end up. I mean, I might have an a better impression than other people, but uh, usually, it's it surprises me, and it's a good surprise. <laughs> I noticed a lot of your arts is very dreamy. So, like, do dreams influence your art in any way? I know they kind of go along with the same theme, but do you have any kind of dreams that go along with it? I um I wish I could say more. I I don't remember a lot of my dreams I'm working on that but it it's sort of like a more of a daydream um and yes I would say a lot of it is through day and just I I guess because I've painted trees for so long that it just like that's what I kind of dream about or something but typically um even if I'm dreaming about other things or just thinking about other things or you know I could be thinking about like dancers and the way they move or um but it comes out in chairs and trees so you know maybe that's not you maybe you're thinking of dancers and they come out in basic shapes or pies I don't know, like whatever you want but um it it's it's fun because you never know where you're going to end up and as long as you are um, have the skills to get it out, uh, yeah, it's it's an interest. It's it's fun to see where you where you come out at. <laughs> so, for beginning artists, what would you say like is what should they start with first? Because there's just so much online that people like are always throwing all this information. You should do this. You should do that. What is just the mm -hmm. basic thing people should start with? to get used to getting into art and learn from there? Well, I uh, I usually have what I, it's it's always um, the fundamental, you know, the sphere, the square, the triangle, uh, the cylinder is so, this is art school, but it's what you need, you know? And I, ha I have a little thing I draw, I drew out like very recently because I'm always drawing this out on my stream um, is, uh, but yeah, the basic shape. So um, you have to learn how light is applied to those basic shapes to form contours. And the contours are how you make realistic paintings. So if, you know, if you can't learn how to make something look like it's rounded, it's not gonna look rounded when you draw anything that is rounded. Same with cylinder, same with squares. Um, it's all about those basic, basic shapes um, and learning how to shade them from every direction. Um, mm. That's the people don't really put together is you're seeing it, the basic shape, you know, this circle with the light hitting it here. But what does it look like when it's hitting it from behind? or from below, or from, you know, a weird angle, you have to learn how light hits shapes from every direction. And once you learn how light hits shapes from every direction, you can paint and draw, or you can draw anything. Um, and because everything can break down into those basic shapes. With my trees, it's all cylinders, you know, and, and you know, you've got the tree with the branches. Well, all of these cylinders are not shaped the exact same way because they're like, you know, all different 
twists and turns and stuff. So you've got some that are against the light, some that are facing the light, some that are, you know, and, and knowing how cylinders are shaded is how you shade branches because you have to think of it as, come, you know, it's not the light is all coming from one direction. Well, this branch is turned and, and hitting light from behind or, you know, it's, it's all about, and if I didn't know how to shade cylinders, I could never shade my trees. And the chairs are the same way. How do you shade a, a square? One side is always darker, one side's medium, one side's lighter. And it's and it just kind of depends on how they're turned towards the light source. With all with my chair, oftentimes they're turned in uh, you know many different ways, and mm, yeah, or underneath, or you know maybe and and uh, so like these two are shaded the same because the light sources are coming this way. Um, not the best example. <laughs> um, there's probably one around here, but anyway, so the basic square, because my chairs are all kind of like turned in different ways in the same painting, I have to know how the light's hitting them and what sides are shaded. And it's all because I can shade basic cubes, you know, and that's one of the, that is one of the reasons I really, 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 really like my chair trees because they do have those fundamental basic shapes in like a really primal way I don't know uh of of cubes mixed with cylinders and and then the 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 cluster of them usually at the bottom or the roots are almost like a sphere a sphere so you shade the sphere first and, and and then anything that's in the shaded part of the sphere is like the cubes those cubes will never be brighter than the sphere gradient that they're in it's the whole thing so that's yeah i it's it it's boring it's like you're it's exactly what your art teacher told you to do but fundamental shapes are fundamental for a reason and um it, and and learning that is how you perfect realism um i people will go back and practice my basics because it's so fundamental and just it you need to be able to know how to shape them without even without even a second thought you know I don't have to mm -hmm. even think about it I just know how it works so uh that's how I can put all of my little twists and turns in my tree I look so realistic is because it's properly shaped uh and even still for me I have to go back and think like I don't do a lot of fabric drapery but the last time I did fabric drapery I was like oh man this is really hard so going back and practicing and learning you know just first think it in basic shape and and it'd be cones a lot of times it's cones and spheres and or uh, uh, cylinders anyway talk about shading all day long um but that's it's true it's it's really 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 important okay so like to sum up basically um practice a, a lot on your basic shapes and lighting from different directions so that way you can get the feel of what it is to uh, to create things like three-dimensionally is there any resources that you would recommend like your top three resources of like books or youtube channels for learning or new techniques for art? I would recommend uh, Andrew Loomis's books. Any book he publishes is is exceptional. It's what I, hang on, I'll grab my copy. Um, I don't like to grab two, but this one is like, oh, yeah, there you go. Bigger Drawing for All It's Worth is the best. Andrew Loomis, um, it's fantastic. It's got, uh, I think you're going through, is it this book that you're going through right now? Um, Let me see. I got it right here. Um, it's like very, very similar to what you're doing. I got, I got uh, Joseph Shepard's Anatomy. That's the one I'm working on right now. It's very, very similar. 
what you're doing, but it talks about things in planes, like, you know? Okay. And he is very exceptionally great at perspective. So a lot of times he'll be showing things in perspective, which I really like. Um, and yeah, it's fantastic. He also has drawing heads in the hands, which is great. And hang on. I need that one. Then, these two are also really great. <laughs> um, this uh, creative illustration and also uh, successful drawing. Probably successful drawing if you ha have already kind of a, a basic anatomy uh, thing. Uh, or you're you know fairly decent at basic anatomy. You might look at successful drawing because again he goes really really into how to do all like actual perspectives that I feel like most books don't go into. And it's all about perspective. And then he, and then uh, I see that's a really hard thing for me is perspective itself. So I, I'm definitely going to check out some of those books. And yeah, again, basic shapes and, and also mm, yeah. those of basic shapes, you know, and in the correct perspective, like this is a, I'd say successful drawing is one of the best. If once you get past the uh, figures, even maybe before, successful drawing is probably my, one of my favorite books. And creative illustration is also really good once you kind of get those fundamentals down because it can kind of go into um, better way like, things. And I don't know how to explain it. Um, but it's more about like compositions and uh values and how to um how it, it's 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 a lot but i'd say andrew loomis's books are like the best i've ever found that has so complete of fundamentals in it. okay awesome i think we're gonna start wrapping up now is there anywhere that people can find your stuff online if they want to like purchase one of your pieces or just check out your twitch stream um, yeah, you can go to my Instagram and click the, uh, the link on my bio and it has my link tree that has anything that you could ever want about me. So if you, but my, uh, Instagram usually has the latest of my work. Um, yeah. Okay. So what's your Instagram name? This is also going to be on YouTube so that way people can find you. Oh, okay. It's, uh, Mandy. I have to remember. <laughs> Mandy Moon underscore art, I believe, is my username. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, it was awesome talking with you. Thank you. Yeah, it was great talking to you, too. And I will see you next time. Hopefully, we can get you on for another episode when I start doing more different series, uh, doing more specific things. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you so much. No problem. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Well, it was pretty awesome having Mandy on the podcast. Um, check out her art at her Instagram, Mandy, Mandy Moon underscore art. And check out the link tree and all of the rest of her stuff. And I will see you guys next time.